In these videos, I use shortcut keys to make modeling more efficient. Shortcut keys are set up under Shortcuts, under System Preferences. To assign a key, start typing in the menu designation. In the filter box, for instance, Hide, select Edit Hide, type in the letter you want. Let's look at modeling the faucet handle. The handle looks flat, but there's a lot of subdivided triangles. Double click on it to examine the handle. E for erase, and erase a few of the lines. And it shows us that they stay coplanar, which means probably the rest of that is all one plane. Erasing where a lot of lines meet can speed up the erasing process. That line shows that it's needed. Back up one, control Z. We're left with all the faces that are coplanar, which appears to be the entire handle. Command C or Control C to copy it and close out of the component. Now paste that in place, Shift P back into the model, and G to group it, or actually we'll make a component of it. Right click on the object, make component, name it handle, and put handle on the new layer. Turn off the faucet layer, we can work on just the handle. Spacebar, double click, to draw over top of this handle Anything we draw will merge to that face. Double click the face to select it and all its edges. And G, make a group of it. L, now whatever lines we trace, won't get merged to that face. Quickly trace in some edges. I'm just staying on the surface the edge of the surface and kind of looking to make sure it doesn't go too far off of the face. There's going to be some areas where it's chopped off. That's the nature of simplifying a radius. Keep clicking around. Make sure you're on a midpoint or an endpoint. Right there where it got tight, I put two line segments in. I believe that's closed the surface. This is our new profile, very close to the old, but fewer vertices. Select the old one and delete it. We're left with the new handle profile. P to push pull it. Turn on the old faucet and look at the rest of the model to compare it. I'll come over and touch on edge. And do you see what's happening? The further down I go, the more it diverges at the top, which means we can't do a simple extrusion for this handle. This handle looks to be tapered with the bottom rotating outwards more than the top. Click on the profile, T for transparency, so I can find this endpoint down here. Now we know, T to turn it back off, we know that width is the width of the handle at the base. 
zoom out and we can see the amount of taper. Select that side, shift R to rotate. Use the piano hinge method of the rotate tool. Drag the mouse to the second point on its own edge. Zoom in so you can see it. That sets the protractor. Zoom back out. Click on a farthest top point, and now this will be the angle that we're rotating, and touch directly on the CAD geometry. Turn off the rest of the model. There's the amount of taper on the handle. Now obviously this is more rough, it's not rounded, versus the other. But we've established where both planes exist. Now we can erase the joining surfaces, taking care not to hit one of the profiles. Now we'll work each profile inward till the till they touch. Select the right hand profile first, O for offset, click and begin pulling away, turn on the rest of the model, and go to where we want to be as close as we can to the point we started from, touching the existing geometry. Click, that places the profile out at the midline where the two profiles join. Turn off the rest of the model. This is a trick to select the handle faces. Triple click on the face. Everything is selected. Hold down Shift, double click to remove the interior surface and all its bounding edges, then single click for the ring, and we're left with just the outside lines. M, st click to start moving, tap Command or Alt to invoke autofold, turn on the rest of the model, zoom in, and find a point on the CAD geometry to which to line up to. That's good. Turn off the rest of the model and examine. Autofold sometimes chooses its own path to connect things. Let's fix this. E for erase. Erase the offending edges. Make sure not to hit the face in the back. L, and draw simple lines in from endpoint to endpoint to tell it more precisely, E for erase, more precisely how we want that path to be treated. Do the same for this other end of the handle. T for transparency to check, T back off. Sometimes it's easier to trace the new edges in first, endpoint to endpoint. You can see where the lines are meeting a little bit more easily. There's our nice chamfered edge all the way along the handle. We'll do the same for the other side. Reverse faces, and then orient faces. Check. Make sure it looks right. It does. Now clean up any areas that weren't made the way you wanted. This side looks good. This side doesn't. Right click. Orient faces one more time to correct the reversed face. Here's our handle. Now all we need to do is connect with simple lines both side profiles. That did not connect with a face. Draw a diagonal at the same time. That connects it in. Remember to try to keep those diagonals consistent as you trace the rest of the edges. Some of them will be coplanar. You won't need a diagonal.
When it's hard to find the endpoint, you can hover over the midpoint of the existing edge, hold down shift, then touch on the edge, and it will find the point where those intersect. Midpoint, hold shift, touch the edge. Then there's our handle. Very few polygons. Spacebar and triple click. Right click. Select Soften Smooth Edges. Check Soften Coplanar. Smooth the edges to where you want them. Then Spacebar. Double click on the surface. Hold Shift. Remove that face. You go up to Entity Info and Soften and Smooth those edges. Double click. Remove, soften, and smooth. And we're left with a pretty nice representation of the handle. Last step is to taper where it hits the base. If we turn on hidden geometry, you can see there's a reverse fillet right there. It bends inwards. We want that to flare outwards. Double click to edit the handle again. Turn off hidden geometry and select just that face. The hard edges are where it's bounded. Scale S and we'll scale it in 3D about the midpoint. Hold down Option or Control to do it by the middle and pull it outwards. Let's exaggerate it outwards. Curve it around and see the rest of the model to see how much we want to finish tapering it. I look from below, that looks like a little too much, so I'll hold down Option or Control, click, pull inwards till it's bulged out just a little. Makes for a good flared fillet weld. Last point. Select the top edge so that it moves to meet the handle body. M for move. Inference lock on that edge. Click and just move it inwards till it's passed. Let's do the same on the bottom if it needs it. Might need it a little. Here I'm just going to go in the green direction. Start moving in the green, hold shift, and now watch it till it's just inside of the handle body. These two can be made into a component and mirrored about the middle of the faucet. Make component, call it faucet half. Set the component axis just for fun to the middle midpoint in the group and keep the red and green the way they are now. Make sure replace with selection is checked and create it. Now copy that to the other side, M. Put it in copy mode, copy it over. We know it's going to be in the green direction, so you can right click, flip along, components green direction, then we'll move that back again. To snap to the origin, edit the original component, draw a line, just a short line segment, at its origin, it's a yellow dot, spacebar out, move those to coincide from that endpoint to that endpoint. Now we know they line up. I put those those lines on a hidden layer. There's our faucet, and all we need is to draw the base to finish it up.